Great, so now we have everything. Let's give it some scripts to make it move. So we're on Gobo right now. You can see he's got the blue ring around him. And so we want him to, to change X by 10 if we move to the right. We move with the right arrow. So we want the forever if the right arrow is pressed, change X by 10, and then we want that to start whenever the green flag is clicked. So we're going to duplicate this to make that happen for the left arrow. And we want him to move by negative 10. So let's click the green arrow, right and left keys. Gobo has a nice quick motion, which is a lot better than if you just uh, did the change X uh, without the forever loop. Don't know why it works that way, but it does. Great, so Gobo is ready to go. Now we need the soccer ball. The soccer ball is actually a little more complex because we want the soccer ball to do a couple of things. We want the soccer ball to move around the stage but not go off. And then if it's touching Gobo, we want it to change direction, directions like he's kicked it and move away. If it gets by Gobo and it crosses the goal line, then we want it to let the user know that, know that they blew it. So let's start with making it move. So when clicked, we're going to do our for, um, let's see, no, we're going to do our motion block to move and I have found that six steps is about right and if on edge bounce. So one thing we want to do though is we want to start this, start the ball at zero zero so it's not in some random place. When it starts it's always someplace that is consistent. And now we're going to get our forever loop in here. Move six steps. If on edge, bounce. Let's try that out. We click here. Oh, we forgot an important thing. So I'm going to stop that by using the stop sign. And that is this. We're going to point towards Gobo. Now let's see what happens. much nicer and if I move Gobo we get some interesting motion with their very simple script just have to set it up right move six steps if on edge bounce great so Gobo at this point is not affecting the ball at all because we haven't written that script but we will okay so now we want the soccer ball to react to Gobo so that's going to be a sensing block. So if touching Gobo, what do we want it to do? We want it to turn in the opposite direction. That's a motion block. So we're going to point in the direction uh, of something else. We'll talk about that in a minute. So we're going to do forever if touching Gobo point in the direction of what? Well, what we actually want it to do is to take Gobo's current direction minus 180 degrees so he'll change. Now that's going to be a little equation that we write with an operator. I know, very confusing, but follow along and it'll start to make more sense. So what we want is his current direction minus 180 degrees and we want this script to be active whenever the flag is cl clicked. So let's go ahead and test that out. Uh, OK. 
Okay, that's a little bit glitchy, but we'll go with it. There we go. Okay. Now we need a script that says if the ball goes past the line, then you lose. So, like most things, we're going to set this script to be active when the green flag is clicked. We're going to use our for forever if loop again, and then we need a sensing block to determine if the ball has gone over the line. And we're going to do that by saying if it touches the color white, which is the line, then we want you to say, we're going to say, you missed for three seconds, and then we're going to stop the game. Okay, so let's try that out. Here goes the ball. Up, oh, and he missed. Okay, so the reason the ball kept going is because we said to say you missed for three seconds and then stop ball scripts, so just so you know. But that is the soccer game. Boom. Uh, okay, you missed and it's all over. Okay, hope you enjoyed that.